football fans, and welcome to The Onside Kick, the podcast where we talk about all the best news and stories in the world of football. My name is Ricky Widmer, and as always, I'm joined by Dave Oster. Hey, guys. And Mark Weber. How's it going? And this week, guys, we're going to be focusing all on the NFL, but it's not going to be the draft. Last few weeks, we've been focusing on the draft. This week, NFL schedule coming out. We're going to be talking about all the best games, and for me... I think it starts at the beginning. That's how the football season usually works, right? Start at the beginning? Well, I mean, it depends what you want to call the beginning. I like the preseason. I don't know about you. I, week one, game one for me is where it begins, and we get a rematch, touchception style. Yep. I'm excited to see this one go down. I, I'm guessing a little bit differently, though. Probably won't come down to that last second touchception. It can't because Golden Tate is gone. Where is the magic not pusher offer going to yeah. do? Now, that push didn't happen. You didn't see that. No, but luckily the Packers do get to play him twice a year since he's now in the Detroit Lions. That's do we exciting. Do we call the replacement refs back for an anniversary game? Just That'd for be that fantastic. game? Just call him back for the anniversary. It would be fun, you know. I mean, I'm sure they don't have much else going on. I mean, uh, you know, high school football games are probably over. They don't play on Sunday very often. But, yeah, so this is going to be a fun game. Uh, For me, I don't like the Packers. I'm a Chicago Bears fan, so it's going to be fun to watch the Packers hopefully get beaten down yet again week one because that's my favorite part of the NFL season. Well, and I mean, Mark, one thing that you were saying before we even started the podcast was about the Seahawks, and you look at their schedule. For a team that won the Super Bowl, I know you get the opening night game this time. It's against the Packers. You get a nice home game. But when you look at their schedule, especially in the fact that all of their primetime games, this is their only home one. The rest of their primetime games are on the road. Not really, you don't see that with a Super Bowl champion, right? Well, I mean, I think it's interesting. Um, they have the sixth hardest schedule uh, instead of, you know, one of the easiest. The Oakland Raiders have the hardest schedule. Um, I know there's a lot that goes into schedule making. But it's just funny to me that they win. They're such a dominant team and still are such a dominant team. They don't have as hard a schedule as the St. Louis Rams, bottom feeders. Oakland Raiders, bottom feeders. You know, obviously the 49ers, Chargers, and Broncos are all good teams. But the Broncos, you lose to the Seahawks and you get the harder schedule now. Yeah, that's like kicking a dog always down. But, I mean, the Seahawks team not only gain a very hard schedule, but like you said, Ricky... Lots of road prime time. Lots of road prime. They're gonna time. have they have the Thursday night opener on NBC, then week five at Washington, then they're gonna be at San Francisco week thirteen and at Arizona it's week sixteen. It's interesting because if you remember from last year, the games that the Seahawks, you know, had a little bit of a harder time with always were the away games. They dominate at home, as we all know. So you get those away games. People might be surprised to see the Seahawks well, struggle a little bit. The one thing, and I mean, if you're going to schedule it like this, that's fine. Go ahead. But when you come out and say, okay, the reason why we did this was because we're afraid to schedule a Sunday night game at Seattle because of the 12th man, because we want the game to be more interesting. You're kind of, to me, taking that organic feel of the NFL out of it. You're trying to play for matchups yeah, instead of just letting the schedule be organic. No, there's nothing organic about the schedule. They have a group of people who get together and decide mathematically. No, I'm talking about organic, be. like as the football season plays on. Like to me, it shouldn't matter if you have a Thursday night game, Seattle at San Francisco or at Seattle. It doesn't matter. The, the, the it's going to be a good Super game Bowl, either way. The defending Super Bowl champions. It doesn't. Then I they should think, get most of the home games, no, right? They, on the prime they time? should have the hardest schedule. So the primetime games should be away because the Seahawks struggle away, and they are the they're the champion. They're the best team. They get the hardest schedule. You want to throw them through the gauntlet? You want to yeah. make sure? Yeah. Can they do it again? Well, you're going to have to prove it against every tough opponent in the league. That's how you get the rotation. Uh, you know, with the good teams funneling out after a few years, going to kind of mediocre, the mediocre teams getting a little better. Exactly, and that's that's why the uh, <laughs> except for the Raiders, there's always an exception. But you know, that's the whole thing with all these teams coming off their Super Bowl wins. How well are they doing that following season? Usually, not so great. And the you know, it's a fun thing with the schedule. I really like looking at the difficulty of schedules because that's what takes a division winner and makes them into missing the wild card. Or taking the conference championship and putting them into the wild card. You know, that's just, it's the thing that it doesn't really make much of a difference when you're just looking at it on paper. 
But come that season, it really does have a big impact on a lot of teams. And, of course, things change. Who would have guessed the Texans or the Atlanta Falcons would have been awful last year? Mm -hmm. So we never, you know, who knows? The 49ers could be absolutely terrible. The Seahawks could be absolutely terrible. Either one of those teams can go and win a Super Bowl either. Well, I guess that's the one thing you have to worry about as a Seahawks fan. All those road games, their offense usually doesn't get going until later on. So, it, well, it's one thing to worry about that. You're still, you got to have some faith. You, you are the champions. Go out there and prove it. Yeah, but I mean, to combat that point, Dave, where you said their offense doesn't get going until later on. If I'm a Seahawk fan, I'm going, okay, I'm okay with that. Because every game before, I'm going to say week 10 and above, is games where it's like, okay, there's a sprinkling of some hard games, but not too tough. From week 11 down, Kansas City, good team last year. Two games against Arizona. Arizona's a team I think that can compete with at least San Francisco for maybe the second team in the division this year. You also have both games against the Niners, a game against Philly on the road, and then you cap it off late with a home game against the Rams. Not to be overlooked, as much as I despise Sam Bradford, they still have a really good defense, and that offense could pull something together. And, I mean, don't... I know you hate Sam Bradford, Dave, but he could have a good season this year. He could. And he who could knows? have a fluke. By the end of the year, he might not even be playing quarterback. We can always hope for that. I mean, those are the interesting questions. We talk about— uh, even Dave would love that, right? Before we were well, recording the podcast, you know, we're talking about how the Cardinals are the third best team mm-hmm. in the division, yet still possibly a wild card team. At the same time, Carson Palmer might not be there. Yeah, he but might if get they, hurt. I mean, to throw our— He has no knees. The draft still hasn't happened yet, and to me, I'm— I'm assuming and I'm predicting that the Cardinals are going to go out there and have a smart draft, get a good quarterback behind Carson Palmer, and who knows? We said about Sam Bradford might not be playing quarterback. Carson Palmer might not be playing quarterback at the end of the season. You never know. I mean, that's one of the big things, obviously, with the uh, even with the Packers, who everyone once again expects the Packers to go ahead and be a Super Bowl contender. Yet, hey, for a long time, they're playing without Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. And they shouldn't even have been in the playoffs. But, you know, our favorite guy, Chris Connie, had to get the Chris Connie mention. You know, obviously, they're in there playing uh, and getting their ass kicked, you know, as they deserve. But, But, I mean, kind of the move on, and it's a team that we all brought up, and I just want to, let's talk about their schedule. The Oakland Raiders. If you look at opponent win percentage from last season, Oakland has the hardest schedule. But who are they playing? They're playing the AFC West twice a season, and then this year they have the NFC West and the AFC East. Not divisions that are uh, full of cupcake teams. Not at all. And I don't know. I mean, I mean, you can't exactly cater to bad teams like that, but Oakland does have to kind of step up. They're in a really good division, and they need to play against top talent equivalent. So I, I think honestly— Really, you can't cater to bad teams? That's, see, I see that's that. why— and I'm looking at the easiest schedules with win percentage, opponent win percentage. Here's the top four. Colts, Titans, Jags, Texans. That's an entire division. Exactly. That's my point. Is like Their division is facing easier divisions. Yeah, but you have three teams in there. I would say Titans, Texans, Jaguars, the NFL, because of who who's playing who divisional-wise, catered to that division and didn't do the Raiders any favors. Well, that's because the Raiders also have other teams in their own division who are very good, who everyone wants yep. to see on like TV. Like Denver and San Diego I'd put in there. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what I mean. It's like you can't single out a team, pull them out of their division, no, give I them know. an easy schedule. I mean, it is the same thing where we're talking about how the Oakland Raiders are a bad team that has a hard schedule. At the same time, the Indianapolis Colts, a good team, has the easiest mm-hmm. schedule. And that's, you know, that's just another thing that doesn't really... Doesn't really add up. You know, well, and that team also, is a lot better than the schedule and, they get. And also, I'm going to say it right now: take these easiest schedules with the w- opponent win percentage with a big grain of salt. Because I mean, the whole reason why the Colts have arguably the easiest schedule is because they have the AFC East and the NFC East, or AFC North and the NFC East, two divisions where the most of those teams weren't great teams last season. A lot of underperformers last season. You're right. So, I mean, those are teams, especially like I'm looking at Cleveland. Cleveland might be a little bit better than last year. Pittsburgh. I'm expecting Pittsburgh to be a better team than they were last year. And then you got like the Cowboys and Giants, teams in the NFC East that last season were duds. This season could be playoff contenders. Well, yeah, the Giants you always have to watch out for. 
purely because Co- is, is this a, is this a Coughlin hot seat year? Exactly. So they're going to win the Super Bowl, right? There's always that chance. I mean, Manning has looked so much better in the past, and at this point, you just got to be scratching your head, being like, "Is he really done? Like, is that it? Are we, are we just calling it a day?" We're talking about Eli in this case. We are we talking are. about Eli, he not might Peyton. Have a few more Super Bowls. Than he. <laughs> he could. I mean, that. But he looked so bad last year. That's the point. He loves so bad. <laughs> full sense of security, so he can go win a Super Bowl. It's easy. See, he's the smart Manning. Peyton just goes out there and impresses everybody. Mm-hmm. Eli, he and then plays the, mind games. <laughs> see, he impresses everyone and then disappoints them. Eli comes in with no expectation because he's so bad. He just doesn't look like he cares. And then comes out and goes, "Oh, that's right, guys. I can play football every now and then. Two I rings. Can do it. Two rings. And on top of those two rings, he's perfect in Super Bowl appearances. Ooh. Can't say that about Peyton, right? No, no, you can't. He lost last year. I wish he lost every but single I mean, one of them. <laughs> Yeah. Getting back to the Raiders' schedule, and I know that, like we said, the NFL can't cater to them. They didn't cater to them. Do you see the Raiders overcoming this schedule in any way, or are they going to be a 4-12 and team again? 4-12, and no. I mean, they have three games that are pretty much winnable as it stands right now. I mean, you know, with St. Louis, with Buffalo, and Cleveland. maybe Cleveland. I mean, I think Cleveland's a better team than Oakland. Mm-hmm. I actually think all those teams are better teams than Oakland. Um, but I, it's just it, the hard thing for the Oakland Raiders, they start off on a bad stretch. I mean, you go to New York. If you're playing New York, uh, the New York Jets at home, I think it's a it's a pretty winnable game. Yeah, Going but the Jets are yeah, also a team. The Jets are also a team where I'm not quite sure if they're going to be good or bad to start the season. But that's the whole thing is at the beginning of the season, you're definitely going to see them at their worst. You can only hope that the Jets would or get better as the season progresses. Do you see them at their best because this is when they have talent such as Mike Vick ready and able to True. play? True. But does he start? That's the question with the Jets. Yeah, we don't know. We don't yeah, know. Yeah, that we'll wait for yet. a preseason on that one. And I mean, one thing that I mean, some could see this as a blessing to me. I don't know what the Raiders schedule. I see it as a little bit of a curse. A week five bye, so you get oh, that early bye week. Nothing good about early buys. Nothing good about an early yeah. bye. But I do love what the NFL did with this revenge matchup week two, going to take on the Texans. Come on, Shav gets to prove a little bit. Maybe maybe a little revenge. Maybe he'll just throw another pick six. I don't know. And hey, let's be real. I mean. Yeah, he might not be even be starting week one. Fitz, no, he will. They could draft a guy like no, Garoppolo and start him right away. Happen. No, Shab is the quarterback. He's gonna sit there and learning how to throw pick sixes behind Shab if he doesn't go to the Houston Texans where he belongs. Yeah, I was just kind of uh, throwing out a name there. Any quarterback that the Raiders draft could be taking Shab up for that first and they've got starting an open job. Spot. There's an open quarterback spot. They traded uh, Terrell Pryor. Yep. Dave's yep. favorite quarterback. TP is gone. A little disappointed that we didn't get a chance to develop him more, but... He's going to be the backup behind Russell Wilson. Yeah. The, Better uh, second, environment. The second highest paid quarterback on that roster. Well, and I mean, Mark, you brought up, just to kind of switch to now another team, because there's so many schedules to talk about, I actually, in my pre-podcast notes, I put down the Texan schedule as the winner. They are the clear winner of the NFL schedule. Yeah, they have a really sweet schedule, I'll be honest with you. But the one thing, I don't know, I know we're not expecting them to be a fantastic team this year, but let's be honest, last year going into the season on paper, they had a really strong team and there's no reason to think that they were going to bomb as bad reload. as they did. I, I'm seeing so, a full reload. Because, I mean, you yeah. start off the season against Washington. RG3 to me is always a question mark. Oakland's a win. What are we going to see from the Giants? Week four, you got Buffalo. And, I mean, I'm seeing most of these games. Cleveland could be a toss-up, but I see them beating them. And then, what, from week 14 to 17, you got two of those last four games are against Jacksonville? Yeah. Uh, this is a very doable schedule. They they still have a very good defense. They just need to pick a quarterback, whether it is Fitzmagic or whether they, they go out and get somebody. They just have to have a consistent somebody. quarterback that doesn't throw pick sixes. This is a team that can definitely turn around in one season the and other then, way. And then you know, you're getting Arian Foster back, too. Don't I forget gotta that. I got to say it, though. I think the team, and we're talking about these two kind of close together, then the same division, it's going to be the Indianapolis Colts. And I don't know why. It's that last Week 15 matchup because the Colts get the home matchup up mm-hmm. against the Texans. I think that's going to make yeah, a big difference. and I mean— I'm not saying that I'm not coming out and saying that the Texans are going to win, reload, win the division. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Texans pull a a la Kansas City Chiefs of last year and do good enough with a first year he- or a new head coach after their last one got fired and make no. a wild card spot. 
Completely different situation. You can't even compare those, Ricky. You got a team in Kansas City versus a high quality team that is the Houston Texans. The, yeah, that Houston underperformed. Roster. No, but I'm saying they had a bad season, much like Kansas City did, and now they have the easy schedule because of it, and now can get into the playoffs. Because but of the I schedule. Think, I, mean, I just think the difference is everybody expects the Houston Texans to play. No, no, I'm not good. saying that it's an exact cut and copy. I'm saying these schedules are the same. It's an easy schedule like the Chiefs had, and it will help them get into the playoffs like it did the Chiefs last season. So, so you got the Houston Texans as a lock for the playoffs Wild already? card. Wild card at the most. I don't, see, give... I don't see them winning the division. So I'm putting giving... the division with the Colts. Yeah. Really? Okay. okay. Well, I mean... The Colts have arguably the easiest schedule, except for the two back-to-back primetime games with Denver and then Philly. That, that right after those two games, you've got Jacksonville, Tennessee. So it's like, okay, we're giving you some more easy games. And you got Houston in there. I think they could be Houston twice. I don't, I don't know about that. I think Houston you plays them close. Washington. You have Dallas. I mean, to me, Dallas is— You, you calling Dallas a pushover? Wait, wait, it's Dallas Week 16. Late, yeah, late Dallas is early than early Dallas. Ooh, you're right. You're right. You get Dallas later in the season. Yeah, it's on the road, but it's late Dallas. I think the Colts, not saying it for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if they're one Ricky, of the top I two got an teams. important question to ask you. Are you going to predict uh, that the Indianapolis Colts win the Super Bowl again this year? I didn't predict them winning the Super Bowl last you year. Thought they were, you th- you I thought they were going to go, I thought the they were gonna go to the AFC Championship and game. And beat. Peyton Manning. And beat them. I didn't say they'd win the Super Bowl. They'd I make don't it. Think. Yeah. I don't you remember who were, I did. You were the, I, remember, I remember Bears Colts, Ricky. I don't, I don't think I, I Bears, No, Colts. I didn't have the Bears Colts. I think in the this Super was an Bowl. early prediction. No, yeah, I didn't have did. Bears. I didn't have the Ladies Bears. Ladies and gentlemen, in the Super listening, Bowl. go back and uh, watch I, the tapes. I will yep. say, though, with the Colts, I wouldn't be surprised if at the end of the year, because of the schedule, one or two in the AFC. Do you think Richardson actually shows up this year? I mean, they did maybe, throw out a whole lot of talent just maybe, to get him. Maybe, but I mean, I think, picks. I think if he doesn't, Donald Brown is a quality ba- or a quality running back but for to, him. That's a huge disappointment. To give I'm up. not saying it's not a he's, disappointment. He's got a whole offseason, though. He has to be better. Just Plus, to, when you have a quarterback and, like Andrew Luck. We also need to remember that the Indianapolis Colts have a horrible offensive line. Yeah. So with that being fixed, or at least improved, that's going to help uh, everybody. And Any they also back, have any, a... Uh, a Dave Oster favorite in T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton, my boy. I absolutely love this guy. But I don't know. He's he's not going to be the number one. It, it just seems like I, I, I don't have that much faith in him. I'll be honest. He's a deep ball wide receiver. When they put him in the slot, put him underneath. Yeah, he was getting it, but it's not him. He needs to become mm-hmm. – he needs to go back to being the number two, but they don't have a true number one. Because coming off the injury, I don't think it's going to work. Well, and also, I mean, we talked about bye weeks with the Raiders. I think the Colts have a sweet bye week right in week 10. You get nine games up to the bye, seven after. I, I We're getting a little picky here. I I think week nine is obviously your best one. Week 10 is pretty close, though. Um, yeah, eight, nine, ten spot. That's well, fantastic. I mean, That's where you I mean, really the only bye. reason why week nine is the best, and this is now general, is because you get the eight and eight. Eight yeah. before, eight after. Yeah, no, it, it's it's a good spot to stop and evaluate your team. Your you know, give your guys a little break, a little breather, and depending on injuries, you know, right around that time where free agency, I'm, I'm sorry, where uh, the trading, you know, it's it's definitely in consideration. But the how much for the, how much damage do you think it does for those teams who get that early buy, that week four buy, the week five buy? And Dave, like you were. Mentioning before the podcast, we totally went over it. Seahawks, they have a Seahawks. week three bye. Week four. Week four week bye. Week four bye. So they're in the same boat as Oakland. Yeah, that is that is absolutely brutal. And, I mean, I'm looking at it right now. There's only two teams with a week eight bye, the Giants and the 49ers. Which is kind of strange. I mean, because that the week eight spot's a really good spot to have those buys. So, I mean, I don't know. I personally think really – there is valid reasoning behind saying the NFL, hey, there's only like two or three weeks where we have buys. Mm-hmm. Why Why do teams need to have these week four, week five buys? Just push everything up. I know they want to have as many games as possible, but it just it throws everything off. It's just a weird part of the schedule See, that makes and- it much more difficult than uh, actual season should be for a lot of these teams. I just, and I don't get the fact that, especially like in that situation, you have two teams with a buy, they could be playing a game. We have enough teams to have buys early, play. That could be like week eight. Okay, no buys week eight. And push them one to one week, one to another week. 
Sure, why not? I mean, I have no problem with that as well. I, I would like to see those early weeks go away. I mean, really, what, what big difference does it, it it's make? It's not doing the team any favors, let's yeah. be honest. So it's just trying to give them a break, but it's not going to actually accomplish anything because it's so fresh in the season that mm-hmm. you really haven't had a chance to evaluate yourself and you know any injuries that are that early. I'm sorry. It's not like saying it doesn't matter, but it's early season stuff, so you kind of want to see how it plays out. I, I completely am with you. I think that they should go through and have – they they should limit buys from week probably week six to week ten like just try to concentrate yeah we'll have less games those weeks but I think it would be it would make for a every team would be healthier or better off yeah I think it's of, advantageous I mean to speaking all of, of them. health too I mean the Cleveland Browns with a four, uh, week four buy as well remember they were a team that was destroyed by injuries so if you have you know an early buy you don't have a chance to have everybody rest everybody relax get recuperated. It, it just doesn't help. And for teams coasting in the playoffs like the Broncos, I mean, late buys, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, we get like two weeks off in the last five weeks of the season, you know? Well, and I mean, looking, you say the Browns, they have that week four bye. I'm looking at the games before that bye at Pittsburgh and then two home games against the Saints and Ravens. No favors there. Those are three games that, I mean, two highly classed divisional games, and then you get to play the Saints all before your bye. It's like if you go into that 0 and 3, it's like, well, okay, what did we expect? Did we expect to be 3 and 0 after this? What adjustments do we make? Sure, I mean, it's an interesting situation to be in because you do have the ability to kind of bounce back. I mean, nothing gets you bouncing back quite like a bye, but at the same time, nothing is a morale killer mm-hmm. as well. We have not won a single game and we already have our bye week. Yep. And then I mean, they come out of that bye at Tennessee and then boom, they're playing Pittsburgh again. So I mean, to me, I know that Oakland has the highest opponent win percentage, but the Browns also no favors when it comes to the NFL schedule. One of the things I notice, because I'm a guy who the first thing I do when I look at a schedule is I go, what are my primetime games? And I looked at the Monday night games, not that many ones on the schedule that make me go, oh, I got to watch that. Yeah, it was a little disappointing to see the lack of, I don't want to say quality games, but... If you're just looking at teams on paper, which is all we can do at this point, you're kind of like, really? That that That's all we're getting? Like, you know, I mean, look at week one. New York, Detroit, San Diego, Arizona. The only reason why I'm interested in the second one is because I want to see how Arizona does I actually, in prime time. I, I'm going to have to disagree with you. I think both those games are fine. You do? I think both those games are fine because the New York Giants are such a question mark. I'm excited to see are they going to be a good team this year. Detroit's a division rival for me, so I'm a little biased on that. I want to see Detroit lose a game. And then yeah, San but Diego I mean, and Arizona, this, that's a good match. Both those teams were quality playoff teams. Of course, Arizona didn't make the playoffs, but they just missed it kind of off technicalities, really. Yeah. I, I think when it comes to the Monday night games, Monday and Thursday are never that good. Sunday night football is always oh, su- a good one because see, they flex it. To kind of combat your um, one point is I feel like – out of any of those games, the Saints Falcons game week one should be a at least a Monday night game because not only is it a divisional battle, it's are the Falcons gonna be for real again or are they gonna be as bad as they? Because the Falcons had a surprisingly bad season last year. Yeah, they were they were almost as bad as the Texans. Yeah, they were very close. But yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I it's hard to kind of put some of those bounce back teams. Let's just hope they become good again. Type of thing, because who knows? I mean, for all we know, I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm very, very sure that mm-hmm. it's not going to happen. But the Falcons could have 10 years of horribleness coming up right now. You know, you just never really know. Of course, you know, same thing could happen with San Diego, who is in the uh, Monday night spot. I just think Sunday night football is obviously what the NFL cares the most about. Definitely. Oh, this... Because we've been waiting all well, Sunday for Sunday night. Well, and even though it makes this, is, yep. <laughs> this is, I kind of wrote down already. my top games for each Monday night and Sunday night, and I only have five games, well, technically six, five weeks where the Monday night games are key. You have the opening weekend, then week two, Philly at Indy, week nine, Indy at New York, just because I like the Eli, Andrew Luck going at at each other. And see, I don't even think that's going to be a great game. Carolina at Philly week 10, and then Baltimore, New Orleans week 12. Yeah, and that's the disappointing thing. That's I, Monday if you night. go through your Sunday night list, it's like twice as much. And honestly, there's only probably 
due to flex scheduling starting up later in the season, Mm -hmm. really happy about that because we get to kind of stop and be like, all right, do we really want to watch, you know, Denver Bengals? I'm sorry, that's a Monday night. For for Sunday night game. Yeah, that's one of them where I go, whoop-de-doo. Yeah. I'm sorry, for Sunday night game, it's like, okay, you can either watch Dallas Cowboys Eagles late in the season week 15 or 49ers Seahawks. You could swap that one in there. Pats Colts, Bears Packers. I mean, there's a lot of great games. Denver KC, you have Bears Niners week two. Yeah. There's so many good games for Sunday night, and it just kind of makes me go, why why bother pumping up Monday Night Football? I know the NFL is all about like trying to take over like the entire week. They they've now grabbed Thursday, and there's even a week of Saturday games late in the and, season. And ESPN announced that they will have one wild card playoff game. And I don't like that because this is what we see. Um, and one of the reasons why Monday Night Football is not that great. How do you watch Monday Night Football? You turn on Channel Thirty Two for us at least. I don't know what it is for you. Thirty four for ESPN. me. ESPN. You got to watch it on ESPN because. You know, Sunday Night Football, what we care about, NBC. That's a big deal. It's all ESPN, networks, yeah. Well, and do we care about well, ESPN that much? I mean, look, to me, why there's such a – why Sunday Night Football should be the better matchup is you've been gearing up for football all day. You've been watching you've games, been watching games, it. watching games. Sunday night. This should be your, like, finale, your big hurrah yeah, to end your night. Yeah, you've been waiting all day. Yeah. For Sunday night. <laughs> For Sunday night, where Monday it's like oh, I, I went to work isn't and as awful as it is this time, because that song became awful. Who they changed the singer? It's Carrie it Underwood, used to be right? Faith Hill, right? Yeah, right now, now it's, it's Carrie Underwood, Underwood and yeah. it's just bad. And then Monday Night Football's song was yeah. I honest, oh man, it was the one of the worst things I've probably ever heard in my life. I I've mean, heard the, a lot of shitty. The music. only thing that I kind of like about Monday Night Football are their commercials leading up to it. They're, some of them are kind of funny, where they have like the oh here's the workplace, oh you're getting ready for Monday night, and to me that's why to me Monday night football is like eh I've been working all day I'm working not set all for football for Monday night yeah I'm not yeah. set for football Sunday I'm sitting on my couch watching football all day exactly you're just prepping yourself and do you really want to go out to a disappointment like week thirteen Broncos Chiefs I mean I'm sorry I was a huge believer in the Chiefs last year. Before the season started, I'm like, nope, Alex Smith is the answer. Andy Reid, this is a legitimate team. And I come around this year, I look at their schedule, and I'm like, yeah, unless they pull off something really stunning in the draft, they, they're not going to live up to what they did last year. Do so you think that's Sunday I think by night week game, 13, Sunday night, I don't think they're going to be there. You think I, gonna I think be they're going to get replaced. By what? New England Green Bay, week 13, is going to take over the Sunday night spot. That's one of my favorites for a flex swap. And the Chiefs have one of the harder schedules. Their schedule is... Just a little bit easier than well, the Seattle the reason Seahawks. why they have that hard schedule is because they actually had a good season exactly. last year. Which is Deceivingly why, good. And remember why I constantly said the, C, the uh, Kansas City Chiefs are not real team. Because they had such an easy schedule because they were so bad the year before. Right. This is more... This is going to be more real. I don't think they're going to fall off the face of the earth. No, no. But they're, you know, but they're not the road. Yeah, they're going to go. You like don't think eight, they're going to be a wild card team? Nine and six. I mean, they might be in the conversation because it's the AFC. And but they're not going to be a ten. Had but they're not going to be a teams. ten win wild card team. Is what no, you're they're going to be like that seven and eight. Are they going to be at eight and eight? Possibly squeeze in because of some tiebreakers. But still, I don't expect them to be playing competitively against the Broncos. Especially with Manning, assuming he's still healthy, I mean, absolutely not. I just see that offense is ridiculous. About that week where we have the week thirteen, where yeah. it's at Broncos Chiefs. First off, the thing that I feel like I was going to look up to combat your Patriots Packers. Yeah, the thing that hurts that is we have some three to me prime time games on Thanksgiving: Bears Lions, oh, Eagles Cowboys, and Seahawks Niners. I love Thanksgiving this year. It's amazing. And I mean, there is, I looked into it, they can flex either of the Lions Cowboys games to prime time yeah, if they I, want to. But I don't doubtful. know if you're going to prime time that over Seahawks Niners. That's, that's extremely doubtful. To me, the only other game on Sunday that I could see being a Sunday night game, Redskins Colts, just because of Andrew Luck RG3. If RG3 is back, he's healthy. Redskins are doing well. They prime time that game. I'm going to give you two possibilities and then a maybe. One where I'm not very sure. It really is going to depend on how these teams bounce back. Uh, obviously, Dave's uh, New England and uh, Green Bay. Arizona and Atlanta, 
if Carson Palmer's you know staying healthy or they have a rookie quarterback who does a good job, that's going to be a, probably a quality game. But New Orleans Pittsburgh, if Pittsburgh finally gets going again, there's no reason why the Saints and the Steelers aren't a yeah. great game. See, and ben that, Wraith plus Burger could turn it around this year. <laughs> I just I feel about with the Steelers, they're a coin toss to me because I look at the Pittsburgh Steeler name and I go, good team. But I look at last season, I go, not so good team. They just, Better than the year before? They, they honestly need some offensive weapon at this point. Big Ben is just getting drilled back there. Well, and I mean, I'm looking at their schedule. They've got one of the later buys, too. 12. Week 12 is their buy. So to me, I know, Mark, you said week nine's ideal. I like the late buy if you're going to give me a late buy. Like a week 12 late? Mm-hmm. Oh no, I don't want anything to do with that. Later really, tonight. the only the only way I like that is if you're in a position where you're so far ahead schedule wise. I mean, if that you've you can already just be like, if you already won cruising. ten games, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah you that's can just cruise saying. through at that point. And to me, the Steelers, based on some of the opponent, like the Browns, the Buccaneers, the Jags, they you're got just the handing out free twice. wins at that point. They could be in a situation where they're going to like, beat everybody. They yep. could be in a situation where it's like, okay, we're in a prime time spot to get into the playoffs. Based on how many wins we have already. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely possible, especially if they bounce back. Like, you know, I, I'm going to be honest. Last year, I thought they were going to be a lot better than they were. Um, and they were duds. Yep. I wouldn't call them duds. They were very mediocre. But it, it's going to be interesting this time. I don't know. I don't want anything to do with that late of a buy. Even if I am a good team, mm-hmm. I just I don't want to risk that at the beginning. When it comes to you not knowing things, I would rather. Ideal situation. I would love the NFL just said, week nine, everybody gets a buy. So halfway through the season, we yeah. take a week off of football. Yeah, it's it's just like having the All-Star I break. I don't like that. Well, h- how about this? Scheduling-wise, I mean, as a fan, I would not like no. it, but scheduling-wise, don't, don't it's take perfect. A, don't take make a week everything, off. Just make everything even. Why do we have this weird, obscure bye week that gives some teams a weird advantage that makes no sense? Mm-hmm. I, I think that would be the fairest way to do, but I can't see the NFL turning their back for one week and just closing doors. Yeah, no money coming yeah. in the doors. Or you just do it the way it should be is if you have a short week, we're giving you a buy. Yeah, and that I kind of agree with. If you're playing on a Monday night, you get a buy the following There's week. There's the weird thing in the Seattle Seahawks schedule where they have like three games in a really mm-hmm. short period of time. And that's, that's the perfect situation where that week four buy should go in place on one of yeah. those. It's like something... I don't even actually remember what it is. We can look it up right now. Well, well, and while you look that up, Mark, I just want to throw this out there. One non-primetime game, it's actually a noon start game that I'm excited for. I just want to throw it out there. Is uh, Lovey Smith comes back to Chicago week 12. Yeah. Uh, I'll be pretty excited to see who his quarterback is at that point of the season. I think the Bucks are a team that could surprise a lot of people. Honestly, I I think they're not too far off. They still have well, a legitimate defense without Revis. So I, I think Lovey comes in, fix up the defense a little bit, I still and crunches them forward. They have a week seven bye, and those six games before that bye, I feel like they could be one, maybe two wins. Yeah. Because they play Carolina, Pittsburgh, New Orleans, Baltimore. To me, I'm right. chalking those I'm, all I'm up, not giving them wins. All up as losses. I'm saying they're going to be competitive. Got, I know. But then they've got the Rams and the Falcons. Those are the only two games right now at this point in time that I can see them winning before their Week 7 bye. And to go back to what I was saying before, I actually have a little incorrectly, but okay. the Seattle Seahawks, they what they have is they have two really short ones. They start off mm-hmm. Thursday um, and then going the long one, actually, 10 days over to Sunday. It's a weird little... Thing there, they had the that weird break. They had the weird break between thirteen and fourteen, where you do have kind of another Thursday um, and Sunday matchup. With those ones, you got Arizona Cardinals, San Francisco 49ers, and Philadelphia Eagles. Not the right times that you want to be thrown off for long weeks. Short right, week. right, absolutely. And how about how about the guaranteed win of the year? You know, Patriots have that week ten bye, so week eleven they go in and they're going to beat the uh, Indianapolis Colts. Right, right, guys. Belichick off a of bye. See, He's I had don't a good know. I, of time to watch the that tape. that game when I first saw Patriots Colts, I was like, "Yes, oh, it's another." Oh wait, Peyton Manning's not there. Yeah, but sorry. Then I, but then I went, "Wait a second, Andrew Luck's not that bad." And then I got hyped back up. I mean, for he's him. okay. Yeah, but he's no, he's no Peyton Manning with the Colts. But 
He is a good quarterback. He's a decent quarterback. I mean, he's about you'd, average. You'd take him number one overall over any of these quarterbacks in the draft this year. I mean, he's year. slightly below average, but I mean, he's okay. Really? Slightly below average? He's not even the best quarterback out of his draft. Better or worse than RG3. He's not the best quarterback on his uh, team. Oh, well, he's better than the guy who has a broken leg, yeah. It That's was a hard the, decision It was in the there. same draft, Dave. Yeah. So, how many rings does Andrew Luck have? Count it up there. Hold up the hand. No, he doesn't Corey have it. I'm not saying he has any rings. Year. I never said... I'm saying it right now. I never said the Colts are going to win the Super Bowl. They're different year. types of quarterbacks. I am it's hard to wait. compare them straight up. I'm going to wait until I make my Super Bowl prediction. Okay. I'm sure you will. Okay. I will. I'm going to hold four more days. I'm promising you guys there's going to be an early Ricky. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to throw out my Super Who Bowl. Who are you going to crown? You want to crown their ass? No, I'm not going to Dennis Green it. I am not going to crown anyone's asses. But to me, looking at this, just we've talked about primetime games. We've looked at some individual teams. Any teams that you guys want to look at? Any teams that we've missed? Honestly, I, I'm going back to that list of the easiest teams, e- easiest schedule, and I really do want to see the Titans succeed. I think Jake Locker, if he stays healthy this year, could turn something around. If not, they, they have to go for a new quarterback at that point. This is a team that has cleared house considerably. Well, I mean, and I'm excited to see what they do. Not go after a new quarterback because, I mean, to throw in our – little dash of draft people are saying that they could take a quarterback in this draft entirely with their possible first round pick entirely possible but i don't buy it that, just, that's the only reason I'm, i give I'm, the lead to jake locker I'm right just, now just throwing it out there his mobility makes makes issues for people he can buy that extra time in the pocket let wide receivers get open and i went through their schedule i'm like yeah, yeah they they could they could but uh and yeah. i mean looking at their schedule the biggest interesting game to me is right away week one because they play that Kansas City Chiefs team that and we got to see I, like a okay, kind of a test I feel like the Chiefs are better than a lot of people a lot of people are going to come into the season and go Chiefs had an easy schedule they're not going to do well this season I think the Chiefs have the potential to be a playoff team still not a, only because they're in the AFC. Not a 10 yeah. win wild card team. They're not going to miss the division you can get by to the two wild games. Card being eight and eight. No, I know. Yeah. But I'm they saying. could be that team. They're in still the going to be a playoff yeah, in team. In the AFC, we're talking about. That's why the week one matchup, te- Titans, Chiefs, intrigues me. What are we going to see from the Chiefs? Dave, what can we see from those Titans? Yeah, I. I... That's the biggest thing. Is it's almost like a strip test right off the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. Can the Chiefs, can the Kansas City Chiefs be legitimate another year? Or are we going to see them completely flip the book? Are the Titans going to be the sad sack that they were last year? Well, we'll and see. I don't want to feel like I'm uh, beating a dead horse here, but throwing out bye weeks, they have the Titans the have the bye sweet week. the sweet spot for Mark nine. They've got your nine week eight eight right before it. Split your schedule perfectly. Someone I want to talk about. There's another quarterback who uh, needs to impress everybody, but this schedule is not doing them any. Does favors. his name start with a B and with a fur? It does not. Okay, so we're not talking about Sam. We're talking Bradford. about Ryan Tannehill. Ooh, Ooh the Ryan Tannehill. You know, Along with Mrs. Tannehill, bye, <laughs> we can't forget about the lovely Mrs. Uh, but a week five bye, and some would say some of those easier games. Three out of four of them. Right in that first part before your bye. So you could go 3-1 if you beat the Chiefs, if you beat the uh, Buffalo Bills and the Oakland Raiders. Mm -hmm. But then you come back. Green Bay, Chicago. You get a Jacksonville easy in there. But you're going to play Detroit. You're going to play Denver. You're going to play Baltimore. You're You're going to play the Jets. The Jets on primetime, but it is a late Jet. Do you think two? They have two late Jet games. I mean, week week 13 and week 17, they go up against the Jets. And it all depends on which way you think this team is heading. I don't I don't buy it. I think they're making a lot of moves, getting a lot of guys who are older and more experienced, but it's not necessarily going to improve the team as a whole. To me, this is how I see it based on the schedules. If I'm right now going to do my early, way too early division. Oh, the way too early division. Oh, yeah. so yeah. the way, the didn't even way, way to hold episode. Rankings, Patriots, Jets, Dolphins, Bills. Ooh. I, I would say that's pretty fair. Um, I, I think based off of the schedules, the draft will bring out another one. Preseason oh, season will bring out another one. Um, but, yeah, the Dolphins, uh, they're in a weird spot, especially for Tannehill, because he's a guy who, well, first of all, is Philbin going to still be the coach well, if they have And a we also season? can't forget they, early on this season, even during preseason, they're going to have the Jonathan Martin cloud over their head, the incognito Martin 
dark cloud of, I okay, this think, happened last week or last year. Can they bounce back from it? I honestly think that's not even going to be like a big deal at this People point. People are going to talk about it. I don't. I, th- I think it's old the, news. NFL always comes up with a big story every year. I will bet $10 that it's mentioned in that week one game against the Patriots. Sure, it's going to be mentioned. But, I think but the it's bigger not story something is, that's going to carry over the team is yeah, what I mean. Yeah, the bigger story I'm saying is Ryan Tannehill. I think he really does have to impress people because he's never – He's been fine. He's been a but good he's quarterback. Never been that impressive yet? Have you expected him difficult. to be that impressive though? I don't know. He was pretty impressive his uh, rookie preseason. Who was the quarterback before Johnny Manziel with the Aggies? It's Tannehill. Tannehill. Yeah. That people have forgotten about him because of Johnny Manziel. Definitely, definitely. But now, I mean, playing on the Miami Dolphins, he is playing for that spot. He beat out. Matt Moore, and Matt Moore, uh, yeah, not a great quarterback, but he's a good quality average quarterback. So you beat him out your rookie year, which people weren't really expecting Tannehill to play right off the bat. So, I mean, that was the time that he was impressive. I see your hot start possible, but that makes me think, even if they do kind of taper off at the end of the season, Philbin's going to keep his job, Uh, you know, minus a giant natural disaster or something happening. I, I don't see him... Getting tossed out, which is kind of disappointing because I really think he's a crappy head of the uh, team. So it's it's a little disappointing for me because I think this team has potential. I love looking at teams that are just like just outside. It's like what do they need to just put them in put them in position to make a run into the playoffs? And this is one of those teams that's either you know a free agent away, a couple good draft picks in a year. It's it's a really good team to watch. Well, and I mean, just jumping over you guys staying in the AFC a little bit. One team that every year before the season, I go, ah, they're not that good. And then they somehow kind of surprise me, even if they make the playoffs or not. The Bengals. Cardiac Cats. I'm lo- I look at their schedule still to this day, and I go, I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah, it, the Red Rocket is, is almost a mystery. This is a team that has such good offensive weapons. But he just can't seem to use well, them all up to full and Mark, potential, especially you, you when say, he's in the playoffs. Well, you say, oh my God. They're a good regular season team. You say that Ryan Tannehill jokers. needs to prove something. Andy Dalton needs to prove something because, okay, now we're going to get to see this season. Was it really you that was bringing us to the playoffs, or was it your offensive coordinator helping I, you? I think that the most of the people out there kind of know, whether they're fully willing to admit it yet, that Ryan, um, that we're talking about, uh, what's it? Andy Dalton. Dalton. God, I, was, I wanted to call You're Ryan to Dave this week. somehow, so badly. <laughs> but when we're talking about... Uh, <laughs> Dave is quick draw McGraw this week with the name. Dave, Dave Usually got me Dave thrown off for switching spots. Of, uh, I was going to say, the, the only time I skipped a name this week was when we were talking about the Colts, and I was yep. going back and forth on T.Y. Hill. just got to switch chairs <laughs> I meant to say Reggie <laughs> Wayne with the ACL injury. Yes. Yeah. But, but when we're talking about Andy Dalton, I think the world has kind of accepted that Andy Dalton's just in the right situation, where his... Flaws surrounding past yeah. yeah they cover up for his mistakes and but... i think people are kind of willing to say we're gonna need to move on sometime soon yeah and the, the thing was like last year he went from being like a b plus quarterback during the regular season like a minus b plus really good performances and then it just downhill 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 and i'm How like interceptions can you the, throw the more the you watch <laughs> the more you watch him play the more you realize that his wide receivers his running backs his tight ends are doing him a favor these throws are not as accurate as you would have thought. They're going out there. They're making the extra effort, which, you know, they should be. But it still comes down to this guy may not be the answer. He just looks pretty good because well, of his surrounding it's cast. it's kind of hard to look bad when you have AG, AJ Green as your one receiver and then Giovanni Bernard as your oh main my God. back. That's, I, I, I knew Gio was going to be great, but I didn't know he was going to just absolutely take over and be a monster. See, I just – and one of the things about the schedule that – I don't know if it's just me. If I'm a team and I see, like, let's say I'm going to throw out because we're in Chicago, the Bears, and I see a boom. Let's say Bears-Vikings or Bears-Lions week one. I wouldn't like that. I would not like seeing, okay, especially Bears-Lions because that's more of a tougher game. I don't want to see that tough divisional game week one out of the right out of the gate. I want that one game. That's not against a divisional opponent to kind you of get me set. want to play the Buffalo Bills like the yep. Chicago Bears do? Yep. And, I mean, the Bengals, they come out first game on the road, Baltimore. I will say for the Buffalo Bills, though, that's an interesting team only because E.J. Manuel is coming back from injury. Yeah. And he was impressive-ish at the beginning of the season last year. Well, and it'll be, it'll be interesting for me to see what the Bills, my little snippet on them, 
Will uh, Stevie Johnson avoid the dropsies? And will Never. Robert Woods be a better contributor? And who's buying the bills? There's a lot of conversation about a lot of different groups very interested in it. And are they going to stay in Buffalo? Or are they going to move up to Canada? Where are they I going? think Canada wouldn't be a bad option. I think the NFL wants them to go to Canada, to you be honest with you. can't move the bills out of Buffalo. Why not? Because nobody circles the wagons like, like the, the Buffalo, Buffalo Bills. Bills. Yeah, but when we're talking about history, come on. Okay, Chris Berman. <laughs> we can, you can move teams and everybody around gets pissed, but the rest of the world forgets about it. I was going to say, for the longest time, we've been talking about the for Jaguars the need to go to time. L.A. already. And they might not even be the first team to move. Could be Buffalo Bills. Exactly. And Buffalo, hey, if the Cleveland Browns are any example, you could get the team back at some point. There you go. Never give up hope. And then just be really I sad. I mean, you, don't, you may not want them back, but... By the way, we, do sh- we should mention that Cleveland Browns and Bills get to play each other once again for the Sanders Bowl 2014. <laughs> the Sanders Fantastic. Bowl. Didn't they really play exciting. on Thursday night last year? And that's the that was best the Hoyer time game, to right? have sadness. That was yep. the Hoyer game when he got injured, right? No, it can't be any better than that. Okay, I want to pro- propose one question out for you guys. This can go for any schedule, but the reason why I bring it up is because my favorite team has this type of schedule. If you're an NFL team and you have one primetime game, would you rather have a mix of noon and 4.30 start times, or would you rather have, like the Vikings have, mostly all noon games, except for one, yeah. one late game? You know what I want? I do want all the noon games. I want to get in a schedule. I want to be just a straight a rhythm, routine, a routine yeah. and we know what we're doing every single week. I mean... That it, it would help you as a team to get in that pattern. It's like every week coming here, same workout, same routine, same start time on Sunday. And early in the show, I mentioned how the Seahawks offensively, they were not doing fantastic on the road. And a big problem with that was the time difference. They're doing all their traveling and they have to get up for the early game on the East Coast and try to, you know, wake up, shake off the bed bugs and, you know, get going. So honestly, the consistency, the consistency of the start time matters. But not as much as travel. I think travel plays a huge role in the NFL schedule, which is a big question because we got a couple teams going over to London this year. Mm -hmm. The Lions, the Falcons are uh, for the start. And honestly, I like like the big thing with this is, okay, I think the Lions are an excellent team to put over in London just just for the game, not not like move the team. But like I like this matchup for a London game because the Lions have an explosive offense. They've got – you know, right now, one of the tough, toughest front four in defense in the NFL. You got the Falcons who are going to try to redeem themselves. I love the storyline behind the game. And I think, I know regardless, like the London games sell out, but the NFL is still moving towards trying to set up that franchise in London. I think this is a great, great and idea to exactly put over there. Exactly what the NFL needs are those explosive type of teams. Those teams that are going to give those fans something to remember because... The London fans are still in love with the 85 well, Chicago Bears. <laughs> still. I mean, you go to London games and people are wearing old jerseys of the fridge, you know, of Walter Payton, just well, because that's what they remember. They're, the three London games this year, September 28th, is going to be Dolphins and Raiders. Then you'll have the Lions-Falcons game that Dave talked about on October 26th. And then November 9th, Jaguars-Cowboys. Yeah, that, that's the reason the, I highlighted the, the Lions. The Jaguar game. <laughs> The usual Jaguar London game. But I want to talk yep. about um, a team that we got to talk about, scheduling. America's team. The Cowboys? The Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. So, so how does their schedule break down to 8-8 eight eight this year? I hate and the you know Cowboys what's fantastic so about it? When it comes to this November fall apart, Edge, week 11 by. This November and they fall? Can, did you do, wait, did you just say November fall apart, Edge? Yeah. I love it. And after week 11, <laughs> you get to play New York. You're going to New York, too. You're going to play the Eagles. Yeah, so you go Chicago. division rivals back-to-back weeks after your bye. And you get to go to uh, Philadelphia then. You get to play the Colts. And then another one. One more divisional game to end your season. Will you lose to yet another divisional team to lose the uh, playoff spot? Because they, <laughs> yeah, the, the past four years, take it away. or the past three years, they have lost to every single one of those teams. You're talking about the Week 17 game against yep. the Redskins. My only question about that is RG3 still intact for that game? I think he will be. I, I think so. RG3 is going to pull. Or is his pull, leg blown out? I think he's going to be back this year. I got faith. No, no, I'm not saying he's not going to be back. Will he not get injured before that oh. game? That's way late he may, in the season. He may be injured, but he'll be back and playing by okay. week 17. Yeah, I, I think somewhere in the middle he may lose and out. I mean, with the Cowboys, when I first looked at the Cowboys schedule, maybe it's because you guys are Bear fans. I live in Chicago with you guys. Maybe 
even though I'm a Vikings fan. I looked at that primetime game against the Bears and go, yeah, that's a loss. Well, I mean, eh. can we call Thursday night games primetime games? It's still a primetime game. Bears in primetime. I mean, we got that Bears, track record. Let's put it this way. The Bears might not be able to beat the Packers in primetime, but they can beat the Cowboys in and primetime. We, you know, when we do play the Cowboys in uh, primetime, we usually do pretty decent. Yeah. yeah so. The Monday nighter. We get, we get the, Did you guys have a Monday yeah. nighter against yeah. them we last get the year? Cowboys. I feel like we get the Cowboys a lot recently. Uh, it's the same thing with a, for a while the Chicago Bears were getting the Saints constantly. Um, but, yeah, I think when we talk about the Cowboys schedule – I don't like it. I don't like that. I'm not happy about this game. I don't like opening up the season. Yes, it's at home, but I don't like opening up the season against the Niners. Let's talk about that, actually. The the San Francisco 49ers, they get a new stadium. They don't get to start the season in it. No, you got to go to Jerry World first. Yeah, Yeah. you you go to their, (laughs) you know. Newer stadium. Yeah, Yeah. newer. Uh, It's hard to trump Jerry World. Let's be honest. That place is ridiculous. It's not even that they have to play the Seahawks, who they should be playing. They should open up against. They're supposed to. Um, but they don't, and then they don't get to open up their new stadium. I think that's hilarious and the awful. Only... No, they get to open up against Tennessee. A little, you know, like, we'll give you guys a little bit. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Dallas I'm sorry. Game. Yeah. But Dallas see, this game. is, looking into it, this is the <laughs> only reason why I'm okay with them waiting a week to open up their new stadium. Week one, of course, the Seahawks are going to get the home game for the opening Thursday game. And if you look at the Sunday night game, Colts Broncos. I can't complain about that. Those are going to be two great games. Then you get to open it in prime time against the Bears in Week Two. There I'm we happy go. Yeah. about that. That Bears game. And honestly, it's in prime time, so it's on NBC. I still have Sunday the last. Night. I still have the lasting memory of the last beatdown they gave us. Yeah. So I, I'm a bit eager. I want to see this one go down. I, I think Cutler will still be healthy in Week Two. I hope so. You hope he's healthy in Week we, Two. I, I still. Oh man, going back to that game, like. I remember talking to my dad like, oh, this is a backup matchup. It's going to be a joke anyways. Oh it's going to be such a low-scoring whatever type of game. Just two good defenses. And then uh, who's this uh, Colin Kaepernick guy? Just uh, destroyed what's us. What's he doing to my team right now? He just embarrassed our team. Yeah. Our defense looked hilarious and slow. That's a good test, though, for this new revitalized Chicago Bears defense. Um, it really will be. Are they going to compete against quality teams? And a mobile quarterback who has a chance to make you miss a whole lot. I don't so. know, Mark. You uh, This uh, weekend yeah. you went to C2E2 and you got to talk to one of the Bears I was talking to uh, Israel Adonage. Uh, he, he says the team's going to be back to form. He says he's been getting that defense. You said back. he made fun of the defense, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, the old defense. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there was no defense, essentially, <laughs> is, is the kind of thing that we agreed upon. But, yeah, so it's going to be exciting to have um, Israel back. And hopefully the Bears' defense can actually do something for once. Well, and the one thing I'm going to throw out there, kind of round out the podcast. It's, to me, a nice little end of this scheduling podcast. Winners and losers. Who's your one winner of the NFL schedule in 2014? I'll start mine, the Texans. Yeah, uh, I'm surprisingly going to agree with you on this one. I, I also have them as one of my winners because I think they're one piece, just, just filling a quarterback, and you're legitimately good to go. It doesn't matter what else they pick. If they get a consistent quarterback, you could throw Hasselback in there, and I think this team would go positive on the season. I'm going to call it right now. Colts, Texans is going to be a la Broncos Chiefs of last year. Ooh. Now, I, I will go kind of the opposite um, and say the Indianapolis Colts, only because I think that having the le- the last home game against your division rival, Houston Texans, which are obviously competing for the, um, the division, that's going to be huge. But I'm going to go uh, a little bit of a different direction right now and say the real winners are the Oakland Raiders because they can get that first pick locked up. Nice. I like the way you're thinking, See, Mark. Oh, Oakland is all about the draft, and how can we get the fastest guy on our team? That way you guarantee you will get the Ghost fastest 40 out of anybody in the draft. See, I don't know. I'm and to kind of just move it over into losers because I kind of want to give the Raiders the biggest, like, loser of the scheduling just because it's like you're a But they get the first team. chance to pass up on someone that will change their franchise. Yep. But That'll be great. I'm going to say biggest loser, Kansas City Chiefs. By doing so well last year, you screwed yourselves this year. Yeah, uh, I, I love this team like last year, but so much you screwed yourselves. There's no way they can live up to what they pulled together last year. My loser is going to end up being 
probably the the Cardinals. This is a team that I love to watch. Really a loser? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I love the team. I love to watch them, but this is a tough schedule, and some of the matchups do not cater too well versus their strength. So They'd be my shocker this year. Really? My shocker. Hmm. I don't think it's too much of a shock. They were a 10 and 16. My shocker. Yeah, they were a 10 and 16. They, they're not going to repeat, and they've got a declining quarterback at this point. I'm fairly confident to say Carson Palmer is not going to. He may still throw for a billion yards, but he's on the decline, that's for sure. Yeah, I actually, for mine, this is going to make uh, Dave very happy. It's the St. Louis Rams. Yes. They're the losers in this one. Thank because you. the odds are they're going to have a bad season. The schedule n- does them no favors. And then here comes the question. Coaches, quarterbacks, what are we doing with the future of this team? Because these Clean past house. years have not been good. And if you got to go to the draft to go get a quarterback, usually you're not happy about it. Unless you're the Colts and getting Andrew Luck. I was say, we don't know this next year coming up for quarterbacks. There could be some, there, there's some talent sitting there already that we know about, but there's always that surprise. And Jameis Winston could come out. Who he knows? could come out. I, uh, I just, I don't want to talk about Jameis Winston. I want to talk draft so much, you but do. we took a week off, guys. We took a week off. That's going to do it this week for the onside kick. Make sure to uh, leave your comments down below. Hit that subscribe button, that like button, all that good stuff. And, As always, have a good day, everybody.